Hey guys, how you doing? This is your boy Rich from Rich TV Live, and you too can join the club at richpicksdaily.com where you can learn how to win and trade. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of GiveX, Don Gray. How are you doing today, Don? Great, Rich. How are you doing? I'm doing Hope fantastic. Oh, boy, lots of heavy, heavy weather here in uh, Toronto, the snowstorms. Yes, I saw that. I was, I was kind of shocked because we were the ones having snow and then you guys weren't. And now we've kind of passed that. And now we're having some decent spring weather, it seems like. And it seems like you guys are really getting hammered with the snow, which is yeah. kind of what you expect. You know, I'm from Toronto. So being from the East Coast, I'm used to the snow at this time of year but I wasn't expecting that in Vancouver. So it was a very interesting start to 2022 here in Vancouver. We had a lot of snow and uh, really excited to learn more about GiveX. Our community is very excited about GiveX. And Don, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with GiveX? Well, I started the company in 1999 with my wife, uh, Deborah. Uh, we've been in business together almost, uh, well, almost 30 years now where we've done uh, deals together. Uh, and the company's grown since then. Uh, and I'm an entrepreneur by, by nature. I started my first business when I was in university. And I've had a variety of different types of companies, uh, mostly in the technology business. Uh, some uh, that have done very well, some that haven't done very well, some that didn't do very well at all. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've acquired companies, sold companies, uh, merged companies. And so, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, this is, uh, we started an internet company back in, uh, in the 90s. And uh, we sold that. And then Deb and I decided that we were going to uh, go sailing. And we wanted to have something that we could do while we were on our boat and sailing. And uh, we started this little tech company in Toronto called GiveX in 1999, where we did online uh, gift certificates for small to medium sized retailers, uh, where we would uh, you know, sell these uh, certificates online. And the customers would then use a touch tone phone uh, at the merchant's locations to actually redeem these cards. So that's how the company started. And uh, it's, uh, you know, the two of us uh, plus a programmer. And we now have, as you know, over 276 employees and then 10 countries processing hundreds of millions of transactions a year. So it's a, uh, been quite a, quite a ride. And, uh, but uh, basically, I've been an entrepreneur um, all my life. And uh, uh, that's how we got started in the business. We love entrepreneurial spirit. I've been an entrepreneur my entire adult life. And I have a lot of respect for entrepreneurialism. Can you tell us what are some of the milestones GiveX has set for 2022, which shareholders can really look forward to? Well, obviously, uh, I have to be somewhat careful about making forward-looking uh, uh, comments. But uh, you know, in our in our filing documents, uh, we talked about the fact that uh, over the years, GiveX has grown between uh, five and eight percent, up as high as ten percent organically every year. Uh, just with the base of clients that we've got, we have over 96,000 uh, merchant locations, well over that now, uh, around the world. And just by virtue of the business alone, it grows at 5 to 8% a year. And uh, it's going to continue to do that well into, uh, into 2022. We're quite confident of that. And as part of my uh, raising the funds, we wanted to go and uh, start doing more acquisitions. I've already done some acquisitions in the past, but I wanted to ramp that up. And uh, we're well on our way to make sure to, to make some acquisitions uh, and we should be announcing some in the near future. So, uh, uh, you know, without kind of giving you any specifics, because I have to be careful about doing that, we are going to be hitting all the targets and the plans that, uh, that I was expecting to do. And uh, we're very excited about the year ahead. Fantastic. I'm excited to see you guys evolve and grow. Don, can you go through the team at GiveX and their past success in the public markets? Well, honestly, Rich, this is, uh, this is our, our team's first, first experience with public markets. We've been a private company since 1999, so there's been a little, uh, you know, uh, the team, uh, I'm, I'm the older guy, and, and myself and my wife, Deb, are the older people on the team. Most of our team members are in their 30s and 40s. Uh, the, the senior management team, and uh, they a lot of them grew up in the company in the last 15 to 20 years. So to say that we've got a lot of experience in the public markets, I can't say that because we don't. Uh, but we do deal with a lot of public companies. Uh, a lot of our clients are public companies, so we're uh, aware of the uh, of, uh, the uh, requirements to be a public company. 
So uh, we're, we're looking forward to it. Uh, we believe that this has been a, a much better idea than uh, uh, going with uh, private equity, which we had an option to do that. But uh, we felt this was a better way for us to uh, give our shareholders value and uh, so they could actually grow with us and at the same time, uh, get us the funding we needed to be able to uh, pursue the acquisition program. Now, one of the things I've been really impressed with is GiveX has been able to significantly increase its revenue, gross transaction volumes, and the number of customer locations despite the impact of the pandemic on the global retail and restaurant industries. Can you tell us how GiveX has been able to accomplish this with such success? Well, GiveX uh, has been a cloud-based uh, uh, transaction processor since we started. So we were already in the cloud, so it's not like we had to figure out how to get into the cloud to be able to provide services to our customers in the cloud. All of our clients are in the cloud, so for them to be able to move into the cloud or you know, to start adopting cloud technology was not a difficult thing for them to do. But at the same time, uh, our core base, 80% uh, of our business is still the gift and loyalty card business, uh, processing business. So that business actually did not get impacted very much by the uh, pandemic as a, as a result. Uh, most people working from home or uh, you know, were able to use online services more. So that part of the business actually grew. It didn't, uh, it didn't shrink. Uh, there was also an opportunity during the pandemic for a lot of our uh, clients that were looking for change to change up their point of sale systems or to improve their technology to do that while those things were slow. So we did find that there were clients that had the resources to be able to do that that did it. Uh, so we were able to encourage them. And we also provide some uh, some opportunities and some deals to encourage our clients to make these uh, these uh, conversion to online ordering and online systems during the, during the pandemic and that worked. We did get hit a little bit like uh, upticks, which is our, uh, you know, stored value ticketing system for major venues, such as major league baseball and uh, NFL, et cetera. Uh, these, those venues were shut down. So that business just basically stopped. It's coming back now uh, very strongly. So we're encouraged to buy uh, how well that will do in 2022. How has GiveX built such a solid portfolio with so little dilution and operating for 20 years now, what's your secret? Well, the company operated as a private company, uh, you know, that I control with my wife. Uh, we had some shareholders that came as part of the business back in, uh, you know, back in 1999, 2000. So we've been very careful about the, our, our use of capital. Uh, but more importantly, you know, we don't want to, when we get a customer, we didn't want to lose that customer. So we do a lot of work on our client retention. We keep our promises no matter what. That's a, a part of our internal uh, you know, mantra that uh, all of our team members sign up for. So really, it's been a combination of good technology. We, we build our own tech. It's all in the cloud. So it's not, we're, we're not trying to plug different things into our system. It's all developed by us in the cloud. So it's a it's a one th one throat to choke, I guess, as they say, for our customers that they can go one place to to if they have a problem, uh, they can get it resolved. So our service levels have been very high. Uh, our use of capital has been very conservative. We watch our costs, and uh, as a result, uh, we've been able to stay profitable during the pandemic. And actually, for for almost for twenty years, we had just a few years where we didn't make a profit. So, and our uh, goal is to continue to grow like that. We would rather uh, grow uh, on a steady basis uh, and uh, make good acquisitions that don't cost us too much, uh, that uh, can fit nicely into our into our uh, portfolio, and uh, continue to. So, we're here in another twenty years. So, any investors that are buying into GiveX, they can see, know that they've got a reasonably secure investor investment that's going to grow over time. We love to understand the fundamentals of a company here. Can you go through the capital structure of GiveX for our viewers and how you plan on attracting more institutional investment alongside more retail investors? Well, uh, you know that uh, GiveX went public through a reverse takeover. We, uh, we did it through uh, County Capital too, which is, uh, which is a capital pool company. It was designed specifically to find an investment like GiveX. So we didn't do an initial IPO, but we did do a private placement. Uh, as part of that reverse takeover to raise the $22 million that we did raise. Now, out of that $22 million, there's a, there's a fair number of institutional investors in there, sophisticated investors and uh, private families, private wealth, as well as a lot of uh, retail uh, uh, buyers as well. So we've already attracted both institutional and uh, uh, private users, uh, private individuals. And going forward, uh, you know, Joe and our team, we've worked, we're working hard with uh, uh, people like yourselves to try and outreach to the investor community so they, they know we're here. 
and uh, we, we are happy to answer questions, to uh, you know, do interviews, to let people know that GiveX is a solid company and we're going to be here for many years. So, uh, you know, it, that's attractive to institutional investors because as institutional investors, they want to see a company that's got a certain dollar value that's trading on the TSX, which we are. Uh, so uh, we'll just continue to do what we're doing and uh, try and do it even better when it comes to working with investor relations because it's a brand new area for us. So we're, but we're learning and we're learning quickly. Uh, we uh, so if you customers want to know a little bit more about what's going on, or if investors want to know about what's going on on our website, we've got an investor page there that you can click on there, get into our mailing list, and uh, we will continue to try and uh, give you all the information you need to uh, be well informed as to how GiveX uh, is performing now. And uh, hopefully, uh, as we announce new things and new ideas, you can see what's going on quickly. Don, if there was one thing that you would want shareholders and potential new investors to know about GiveX today, what would that be? Well, I alluded to it earlier. Uh, GiveX is a, you know, it's me, it's a longer term investment. It's not a, you know, buy it and flip it sort of an investment. Uh, we're a company that's built uh, our reputation uh, on good service and good technology and uh, looking after our clients over a long period of time. Many of our customers have been with us uh, 15 or 20 years uh, and big customers that have been with us a, a long time. And the reason they are is because uh, we, we keep our promises. Uh, we, we look after our customers. We look after our team. And, you know, we also look after our investors, the people that invested with GiveX many years ago when we first started have, our, our, have done very well with this public offering. And so we hope to be able to do the same thing with uh, our new investors that are buying into the company now so that they can see that this company is going to grow over time and uh, it'll be a, a worthwhile investment and uh, the returns will be, will be uh, more, than, uh, more than the average. Don, what is the best way for investors to get in touch with the company if they have any questions regarding GiveX? Well, we, uh, we have an investor page on our website, uh, givex.com, and uh, we you go there, you can click on that, and there's, uh, you know, you can uh, ask questions, uh, you'll be able to see uh, current, uh, current news releases, uh, we'll be setting up a blog uh, to be able to answer other questions if we can, and also we'll be doing earnings calls uh, with our quarterly reports and our annual reports so customers can ask questions directly, so it's, uh, you know, we want to try and be as... Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, as transparent as possible with our with our investors, so they know what's going on. And uh, really, the best way to do it is just to you know to contact us through the website. And if we can answer questions, uh, we will. Obviously, forward-looking statements we have to be cautious about, but uh, we can certainly answer questions on uh, the existing business, how we're doing, why we're doing it, uh, for customers or for investors that want that information. Super excited to watch GiveX grow. I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, I believe this is a company that is undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed for many different reasons. We love the revenue growth. We love the fact that you guys are doing over 50 million a year, in my opinion, with a tight float of 115 million shares and 50 million revenue. We believe that this could be priced at three to five dollars. We think this is extremely undervalued. We love our community to really put GiveX on their radar, on their watch list. Thank you for joining us today, the CEO of GiveX, Don Gray. Thank you for joining us today, Don. Well, thanks very much, Rich, and I enjoyed uh, the interview. And uh, hopefully, we can do more as your uh, your community wants more information. I'm happy to do uh, further interviews and uh, provide more information as the company grows and uh, progresses in 2022. We would love to have you back on the show as you guys continue to grow and evolve. If you ever have any big breaking news, anything you want to talk about, love to invite you back on the show. For everyone else that's watching, if you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners <laughs> like GiveX and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching everybody. If you like the video, smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere and subscribe. This is Rich from Rich To Be Live with our very special guest, the CEO of GiveX, Don Gray, saying have a nice day, everybody. We'll see you soon.